we're now going to uh, move on to uh, Professor Barry Cohen. Thank you, Karen. Um, first of all, uh, I've been invited here as uh, someone who conducts research into Asperger's syndrome and also has a clinic for adults with suspected Asperger's syndrome. As Karen outlined, I was involved in confirming the diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome in Gary's case. I'll just say a few words about what Asperger's syndrome is. Many of you know that this is a subgroup on the autistic spectrum, and the difference between Asperger's syndrome and autism is that whereas uh, in classic autism there may be a history of language delay and learning difficulties, in Asperger's syndrome the individual has normal language and uh, good intelligence, but both autism and Asperger's syndrome are on the autistic spectrum because they share the features of social difficulties, communication difficulties in terms of the subtlety of communication, and very narrow interests, sometimes called obsessions. Autism and Asperger's syndrome are neurodevelopmental, that's to say they affect uh, the way the brain develops, uh, thought to be genetic in origin, and uh, I think the particular features to bring out in Gary's case are the social naivety, which is very common in Asperger's syndrome, not realising the social implications of, uh, of his actions, and the very narrow focus, this obsessive interest and obsessive activity. In Gary's case, uh, an obsession not only with computers, but with the search for truth. Uh, people with Asperger's syndrome often become completely preoccupied by trying to find out the small details of facts and trying to confirm if those are true. And it can bring a sort of tunnel vision so that in their pursuit of truth, they're actually blind to the potential social consequences for them or for other people. Uh, Asperger's syndrome is a developmental condition in the sense that the signs are there right from early in childhood, but it's not unusual for people with Asperger's syndrome to be overlooked in childhood, even overlooked in adolescence, and only get their diagnosis in adulthood. We'll be hearing a little bit more about this from Mark Lever, Chief Executive of the National Autistic Society, about the hidden problem of underdiagnosis among adults in the UK and worldwide. <coughs> um, just because of their good intelligence and good language skills, people may not realise that there is a neurological problem. Um, really, the, the diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome doesn't, um, doesn't, doesn't mean that Gary shouldn't have done what he did, but it does help us understand the context uh, that this happened in a vulnerable adult with a disability. Thank you. As I say, Professor Barrett, I'd have to leave shortly. So if you do have any questions for me, this would be the time to take them. <coughs> Sorry, could you explain who you are? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Tom Massimo. I'm from the Sydney at UK. Um, uh, obviously, um, Gary is seeking to avoid the condition of the US. But, but um, how is uh, a business impairment in the US make things a more difficult given that he's been diagnosed with that? There are questions about whether he should be imprisoned at all because someone with Asperger's syndrome will find it very difficult to uh, tolerate a prison environment. Uh, if, uh, as I believe, uh, this crime was, was committed um, through naivety and through um, uh, just an obsession, uh, in this case, with computers and trying to find information, but without any attempt to deceive, uh, without any attempt to hide what he was doing, um, you know, we should be thinking about this as the activity of somebody with a disability rather than um, a criminal activity. But uh, I just wanted to, to, to add that over and above the, if you like, the social naivety, many people with Asperger's, and this goes for Gary too, have other psychiatric difficulties such as depression and anxiety. And uh, prison life may just make those things even worse. Interestingly, he believed that what he was doing was right. Um, 
because he was trying to uncover truth and he believed that the pursuit of truth was morally the right thing to be doing. So um, from his perspective, uh, he, you know, he, was, he was pursuing a different, if you like, a different uh, notion of what is right than maybe we would um, from uh, the rest of society. Professor Cohen. Caroline Hurd, Bloomberg News. Carrie, you're uh, welcome to answer this as well. I understand that you left a message uh, discussing the U.S. and uh, state-sponsored terrorism. I'm not really sure how that fits in with the search for truth. Also, Obama has indicated that he's um, thinking of closing Guantanamo. That was another one of your arguments. I'm, I'm curious, how, uh, Professor, how you see that message as a search for truth. I think you can be on a search for truth and at the same time be able to comment on foreign policy. Thank you very much.